Toronto and Montreal, Canada's two largest and most populous cities. Friendly rivals in almost all aspects, but one thing they share is a love for boxing. But though their passion for pugilism exists, how does each city compare and which one is ready for a boxing takeover? Before diving into the combat sports landscape, it would be wise to look at the sports landscape as a whole. Like, Toronto is what we call a major league city. I mean, people in this town jump on anything sports-wise that they consider major league. You know, the major league sports, the Leafs, the Raptors, the Blue Jays. Look at what's happened to the Argos over the years. It's sort of, you know, gone downhill because to me, it's like, well, CFL is not major league anymore, man. So as a town, we're not going to promote it. And I think boxing has fallen into that trap as well. You got UFC, you got Live Nation shows, you got hockey, you got basketball. And we're not talking about teams that are just selling a couple of $20 tickets. We're talking the championship team and one of the highest ticketed hockey teams that are playing four times a week. Well, uh, you know, that's the qualifying. In French Canada, there's tremendous enthusiasm. I think less so in English Canada, but the, the uh, French Canadians really are passionate about boxing, and that's great to see. I, I, I believe Toronto, it's the same. They, they, uh, they like it more, they like the sport more than here. Here it's more uh, fighters. Toronto is more like, like in USA, they are going to attend to an event because this is an event where people have fun to attend. Toronto's known for it. Uh, you know, you, you'll, you'll get a nosebleed seat at the uh, Maple Leafs game, and you're and you're paying three hundred dollars, and and people gladly, well, not really, but you know what I'm saying. Pe people gladly will pay that. I remember going to a Raptors exhibition game. I've never been to an actual when I was like fourteen, and I was so excited. But it was an exhibition game, so the other team, I can't remember. I think it was the Miami Heat. They didn't have their best guys. They didn't have, you know, it was just, and that's what we end up kind of getting here in Canada. Is okay. Well, we'll get. Maybe we'll get an Eliator Alvarez fight against a nobody now, you know, but otherwise we're going to outsource them to the States, let them pay us, I'll take my cut. There is storied sports history in both metropolises, from World Series wins to unprecedented Stanley Cup glory to the Larry OB. But there was a time when the sports column was dominated by in-ring action. Talking to my dad, who was, who was a, an amateur boxer in his day and a huge fight fan, and a Toronto guy through and through from the, he was born in the late 20s. He would tell you that, you know, when he was a kid, when he was a teenager and a young man in his 20s, boxing was a real thriving sport in this town. Not just the pros, but on the amateur level, he used to tell me stories about how they had cards pretty well once or twice a month at the old West End Y and the old Maple Leaf Gardens had lots of cards long before Chevallo fought Muhammad Ali in 1966 at the gardens, but it was just a regular thing. and. I don't know if you could say Toronto was more of a rough and tumble town back then than it is now, but there certainly was sort of a blue collar aspect to it was. And over the years, uh, I met old fighters from Toronto, like Sammy Luffspring and Baby Gack. These are legends in this town that, you know, people don't know anymore. But if you were to ask people in the 50s and 60s, they were probably the bigger athletes back then in Toronto than Maple Leafs were and that kind of thing. I think it's historic stuff. Like if you look back, you can, I remember my old trainer, Abe Pervin was telling me about Dave Castillo and Elvila Shabdalen at the beginning of century. Like we have a history, Archie Moore fight in Montreal, Jake LaMotta fight in Montreal, Leonard Duran fight in Montreal. Uh, we have like a long history of boxing, the Hilton brothers. It's a, it's a long history of boxing. And I think it's just a, a kind of wave. Like everybody follow from generation to generation. We have better fighter better coach, better referee. That's, uh, I think that's the key here in Quebec. Boxing was part of our culture um, and, and fighting in general, because you had wrestling match uh, here uh, on the 20s and the 30s, uh, and, and you had thousands and thousands and thousands of people there. And boxing was really popular. It started at the old Montreal Forum, 1925, the first fight there. You had boxing there in, in Quebec to the whole the Coliseum and it, it always was in our environment if you want. Despite all the success of the sweet science in the Great White North, 
In the early 1990s, Toronto's boxing scene took a hit. The election of a new Ontario commissioner brought in a renewed sense of excitement, but instead of building and promoting boxing throughout the province, the mandate of the new commission was safety above all else. And for the uninformed, few sports seem as dangerous as boxing. And they brought him in and said, clean the sport up. And he went nuts and he just regulated the sport to death, you know. And to me, it's just because the commission here, led by Ken Hayashi, just strangulated boxing. I mean, fights in this province became really boring. They brought Ken in in the early 90s, after Clyde Gray was the commissioner, to sort of clean the sport up. I guess there were some bad promotions and whatnot. Ken came in, and he wasn't a boxing guy. He came from a karate background, and he decided he was gonna just regulate boxing to the core. And what happened was, you know, all these local promoters just couldn't work with him because Ken was such a stickler. And two things in particular killed local promoters. Um, upfront costs, they had to put so much money up front, which kills small town promoters. A lot of other commissions, they'll give them some latitude, you know, let you can pay some of the stuff there. Ken had, had money had to be up front. And then the other thing was matchmaking, you know, whereas in Montreal, I found the guys that I would work with over the years and that through the Quebec Commission, the Montreal Commission, but they really felt that it was sort of their duty to help promote the sport. So as that, as more and more fights were held, more and more kids got into boxing. And what Montreal was able to do, they were able to keep their kids in Montreal, you know, like the, the you know, the Stefan Roulettes and the David Lemieux and, 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 and Arturo Gatti, even guys like that to, to fight a lot in Montreal. And it just kept growing and growing. Though these conflicts dropped boxing's power in the six, these commission issues did not affect the Montreal scene. It was always popular here in, in Montreal and in Quebec. Uh, boxing is not an underground sport in Quebec. It's a main street sport, if you want. Uh, in our website, the rds.ca, if it's, even if it's a, a general sports uh, media outlet, uh, the, the boxing section is really popular. Uh, just behind the hockey, boxing is really popular. Uh, people uh, know their boxer, know, know boxing, know their boxing history, and uh, so boxing is really popular here. I feel like, say, because a lot of people say, like, oh, uh, you know, in, in Canada, you got to go to the States, you got to go to the States. Honestly, here, well, I know in Quebec, you don't need to go anywhere else. You really can stay here because there's a lot of guys who got, who got those shots, like Jean Pascal, Lucien Boutet. Uh, Jerry Jean. When I first started boxing, you always heard about oh, Montreal. Montreal is great for boxing in Canada. If you're a Canadian, you have to go to Montreal. You have to go to the States. And I did believe that at first. And then now, you know, especially I'm signed with Lee Baxter. He's doing great things for Toronto. And now my, my options really opened up and people said, oh, if you want to be successful, you have to go to Montreal. It's not the case anymore. In Montreal, for a card that has all guys that are less than 15 fights, let's say, you will get television cameras from more than one broadcaster. You will get reporters from five different uh, you know, streams of, of whatever kind, whether it's two from newspapers and websites and the whole thing. The media has embraced boxing and continues to embrace boxing in a way in Montreal that continues to tell stories to the masses. Here we have been able to bring uh, RDS, Videotron, uh, uh, Bell, uh, Bell TV. They realized that uh, there was some, some good, good in income from, uh, for, that, uh, for them too. They had uh, their publicity or the investment with us was uh, bringing back uh, uh, good things for them. So uh, I haven't seen that, that in Toronto, but I, I believe if one day somebody with credibility, because this, that's everything also, with a good reputation, with credibility, uh, I, I believe there is all the, the ingredients for one day uh, to, to have a real, real strong boxing program.
Alexander the Nail Bostic, and on his Superman Stevenson. Though the last few decades have seen Montreal's boxing takeover in terms of Canadian control, Toronto is ready for a comeback. When Ray Dempster came in and took Ken Hayashi's position, he wanted to make it work. And when he wanted to make it work, a lot of other people were able to make it work. Um, now, I think that there's a few tra trains that are going between United Promotions, myself, Three Lions. There's some smaller promoters doing annual or biannual shows. So there's a lot more activity. I think what needs to happen now is we just got to get more exposure with Canadian television and we'll start working with American television. And, and that's my main focus now. It's not the case anymore and I'll prove them wrong because we've had big events, we've had huge events here and boxing is only getting bigger here. So there's a market here for it and it's, as I said, it's getting bigger and bigger. I was searching for a promoter. I was uh, looking for a promoter in the Montreal, they, nobody like really approached me in Montreal reason. I don't know, <laughs> I really don't know. They set up the fight in the casino, in uh, the show of uh, Yvon Michel. So they said, Pat, if you win, Eric came to see me, Pat, if you win, I got a promoter, he's interest, interesting in you, so he probably want to sign you if you win the fight. And I said, okay, let's make the fight happen. Uh, and I gave all I have in this fight. I fought and I win the fight. And uh, we came to Toronto. I talked to Lee, we met. I came to a couple of his show and uh, he gave me a chance to fight on his uh, court. It was a, a big show and uh, I proved myself. I think I knocked him out in the first round and uh, boom, contract. Toronto is a completely different, it's, to me it's completely the, the opposite. It's something special because it's, everybody don't really understand how Toronto work. And for me, if you look in, in terms of sponsorship, in terms of money, in terms, it's like the discover a gold mine. It's, it's pretty basic right now. It's, I think you need, you need to be um, a little bit more active and at one point that's gonna come. And I really believe, because that money aspect, so many people over there, sponsorship, everything. I think I think it's maybe the city of the future for boxing in Canada. There are a lot of cultural differences between Quebec and Ontario, and I think that boxing is uh, one part of that difference. It's in our roots for so long, so maybe that's why the reason it's more popular here, that you had a lot of boxers, that you have uh, a lot of good trainers. I don't want to say that you don't have uh, the, the good boxers in, or the good trainers in Ontario, but here, it's been here for so long. Uh, the, the, the boxing gym, the roots of the boxing, uh, and, and all the training, you have Mark Ramsey who is starting his own academy here. He, he had now boxers from everywhere on, on the planet. He has boxers from France, from the uh, ex-Soviet countries. You had all those boxers here because of Mark Ramsey's presence. Unlike team sports and storied franchises, boxing relies on stars to bring in fan appeal. You can't sell premium seats and pay-per-views with nobodies. And for Montreal, many believe that star needs one thing. The star needs to speak French. And that's a huge key part of all this. Not only speak French, but actively try to become a part of the Montreal, Quebec, Francophone, melting pot community. Yeah, a star is born, but a star is built also. And it takes a lot of work and a lot of storytelling and a lot of money to build a star. So it's not that we don't have the star um, necessarily. For sure, having uh, an elite level fighter in our country that's proud of being in Canada would make a huge difference. But everybody's kind of looking for that easy, quick fix. They all want that boute to land in their lap uh, and it's not gonna happen. If it's a French guy that's popular, like like uh, uh, the champion we have here, that's a bit uh, better deal. If he was French, <laughs> forget about it. French, yeah, sell the place out uh, every day. The guy wouldn't be able to move over here. Uh, the industry has changed too. Uh, before you had really um, proactive promoters who, who need to put show and. Uh, 
the, the, the network, the American network would come uh, really often. Uh, you had Showtime and HBO, they were coming here maybe uh, four times a year, but now nobody came, nobody can come here because the industry has changed. But Canada is home to many, a nation that prides itself on the inclusivity of cultures. If you rep the Maple Leaf, your birth certificate doesn't matter, especially if you can win. And no more recent boxing star has showcased this than former IBF World Super Middleweight Champion, Lucian Butte. Uh, Lucian Butte! The, the show on Bell Center all the time was like 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 people to following boxing. And it was all the time like this and uh, when uh, Eric was uh, take his retirement 2006 he took o took over start to, to be main event and my nine nine fights and until then we sell the first uh, first main event when i was 2006 was 2005 people 3000 and we arrived when i fought here in, uh, in bell center was almost 22,000 uh, people. We grow up all, every fights, we 1,000, 2,000 more all the time. I'll go out on a limb and say he was probably the most popular guy from here. And he's a Romanian, and he's Romanian. But you know what? The marketing that did around Lucian was phenomenal, phenomenal. The guy went to school here, he learned French. He, he mingled with the people. No, I think it uh, was my personality because uh, all the time when I came out, I did do with everybody, take a photo, talk with everybody, it was nice and the people uh, loved me. Sure, it was my style too, at the same time. And, uh, I performed in the, in the ring and uh, uh, was everything together. Here in Montreal was uh, different. It's the big stage. It uh, was uh, like, like I said, 22,000. All every fight, all my fights was more than 15,000 people. But uh, Montreal is one of the most popular city of boxing in, in the world. I think uh, Lucian Buti is a good example of somebody's coming from outside and be able to full pack the, the, the Bell Center. No, it's not. An, uh, it's a question of good boxing. We, we, we give the attitude of, uh, of a very high level of boxing to the boxing, Quebec boxing fan, and I think this is what they expect. With the right kind of star and the right kind of exposure, both Toronto and Montreal are ready to become the next great North American fight city. Right up there with Las Vegas and New York. But which city will reach that peak first? I think uh, Toronto is very close to surpassing Montreal. It's got some work to do and I'm not, I'm not being overconfident. I just think with, with a couple big events, um, which we are going to do, I think we have a very good chance. And, I've had fighters from Montreal that have contacted me and said they wish that they're on the same card and that, they, that we all, you know, I think there's a desire in Canada to get a bigger stage. So whether you're in Montreal or you're in Toronto, uh, no matter where you are, I think uh, we're on, we're on the, uh, the good, good path. We try to develop boxing in Quebec, like in terms, like you say, in terms of Quebec Quebecois first, but we have a couple of good guys from outside. At one point, we just want to bring the level of boxing a little bit higher, and you have to look from prospect from around the world. And even Michel at one point went and bring Leonardo the Rain, and 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 who was world champion in Butte. And after that, like I did the same with with Alvarez, with Rivas, with uh, Arthur Beterbiev, and guys like this, and Christian Billy, who fought for France at the last Olympic game. Like now, we try to bring, we try to. To play at the high level and 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 we can just focus on on fighter from here but all around the world toronto and montreal
Canada's two largest and most populous cities, friendly rivals in almost all aspects, and both primed to be the next great home of boxing. I personally would like to say that it's two fight cities, each with its own story, each with its own culture. And I wanna see boxing grow in Toronto to the point where we can look forward to Toronto versus Montreal or Ontario versus Quebec matchups as the biggest thing that could happen every year or two. I don't know how many boxers is in the US, but I do know that they, they have a lot, a lot of boxer, a lot of good boxer. And Canada is kind of like under the radar. I think so, not too much, not like before, but still we're not like, they're not gonna say like, oh, the Canadian boxer, they're all good, or all and this and all and that. It's a extra pressure for us Canadian boxers to prove themselves. It's a little bit harder because they don't really come to Montreal or Canada to say, oh yeah, we got a lot of boxers, so let's pick this boxer, this boxer, and mix. Because they do have a lot of boxers in the US. But uh, if you're able to live there, bring Canada to the map, that'd be awesome.